We are in this together. You have gifts that I don't have, and I have gifts that you don't have. That we must see. Now is the time. Because it's when we all get together that we will make the changes that we must make. We are the world. Welcome to... What are we welcoming to? Welcome to Malcolm and We, a show heard exclusively on MalcolmPresents.com, a uh, streaming network heard around the world and beyond, when we have no idea where we're reaching. And today, our guest is Becky Suzik, involved with music. And actually, it's Reverend Rebecca Jane, Janie Suzik. Uh, Yana? That's it. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm grateful it, it, to be here. It, 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 yeah. It, it, introduce our guest. This is Yana Larson, my co-host, who knows everything you ever wanted to know about uh, <laughs> Becky. <laughs> Let us know. All right. Well, thank you, Malcolm. A reverent reverend, such as in ministry with Reverend Re Rebecca Jane Suzik. Becky, as she is also known, has been a member of the UU Peace Fellowship for the past decade and currently serves as a religious youth director in her community. UU stands for Unitarian Universalist, and I'm a UU too. But she is more than a reverend. She is a joy fuel fairy, a goddess, a songstress, an artist, a mother, a partner, a Zoom expert, an organizer, a leader, a peace activist, and so much more. Becky, I'll let you fill in the many gaps I've created for you. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. I'm grateful to be here and it's a joy. <laughs> That's um, interesting to hear a reflection of different, different cookie jars that I have my heart in and uh, so grateful to, to be connected in this, this ever small ever healing world that we're in you know we that the pandemic has made the world smaller in so many ways and made it a lot easier for us who believe in peace to find each other and so i'm really grateful for uh for all of the the good things that have come out of of some things that have been so hard well and you're always so joy fuel and full about it you always have a kind thing to say you always have a very welcoming way to speak and uh, i've never heard you say a crossword to anyone or about anything <laughs> don't ask my dog <laughs> <laughs> he gets in trouble with me because if i if i click my mouse sometimes he just starts barking he may make an appearance today <laughs> yeah, he, he often does and isn't it fun when they do <laughs> yeah four leggings absolutely <laughs> Well, Joe, so you're probably wondering where to start, and so I'll help you out. So where I first met you was through World Unity Week, and I was I was just overwhelmed with everything that was happening, and that's when I was meeting John and just hearing about all these people's names, and, the, and now I think I know who a lot of them are because of my continued attempt to try and learn more about everybody, and my goal was to try and get proficient in the hub, which I never have, but I decided that my, my part could be a receptionist to during those important events where I could help give somebody a break. Mm. And, uh, but you can tell more about it because there's yes so well you know uh was four years ago world unity week in 2020 for me that i got got pulled in thinking that i was supposed to present during world unity week oh. and then then i realized wow there's like a, a jigsaw puzzle piece the shape of me and my heart that fits right here <laughs> yeah. in terms of amplifying and helping people learn technology to be a bridge to help as i was learning to share what i was learning and to help people learn to use zoom in a in a more efficient way and my background um, was public relations and marketing. I had 20 years, I had my own PR firm for many oh. years. And so I spent a lot of years in promotion working in a field where I kept saying, where is the public relations person for kindness and for creativity? Mm. 
And then suddenly I was involved with this kindness circle that I had here in my community in Raleigh. I'm in North Carolina on the east coast of Turtle Island, gratefully upon New Seok Tuscarora land. And we, um, I had this circle that I was part of and was interviewed by the news media about what we were doing in this circle. And basically I watched this video and I thought, well, now there's Becky and she's actually acting like a PR person for kindness because I was talking all about the power of kindness to connect us, um, to um, activate our creativity. And then I was hooked uh, and there are many PR people for kindness now. And I think that's something that's happened over the pandemic is we've found more people like hearted people um, and we've innovated around that. So drawing from that experience and being a sacred circle holder for many years, then how do we transfer being in a physical space in a circle into Zoom? How do we create a sacred Zoom experience? And I'm always open to innovating around how to use these Zoom rooms in different ways. How do we keep it safe from people who want to crash in the room? How do we convert the crashes into becoming peace builders? You know, like it's like it's just a big thing. And you mentioned the hub and the hub is an innovation that came a few years ago after we'd had a year, I think, before we had the hub. Of, of online events where we created this Zoom room that stands for Here You Belong, the hub where people can come like a help desk at a conference, only it's a virtual help desk and you, any question can be asked. And in there, John Raymer and I, John Raymer from the Sign Network and Compassion Games, we collaborate and we support people among many other volunteers who work during the convergences to help answer people's questions. And you know, Janet, I like to say, the only prerequisite to working in the hub and volunteering in the hub is to be able to say, I don't know, but let me see if I can find out. <laughs> so <laughs> we have a lot saying. of volunteers. Let me get your name and phone that's right. That we get you in the hub. So, yeah. so it's really amazing. That's what I you know, learned. Finally learned that. Oh, I can do that. That's right. Uh, it's been really amazing, though. When I when I pause to think about how spirit placed me where I am now and how I get to work in support of the whole and all of these individual people and individual companies with very similar messages and very similar commitment to healing humanity and healing the earth, healing our relationship with nature um, and with animals that that I'm in the in the hub of it, you know, I feel that I am and I get to do these things to amplify messages of things that I believe in and help people um, feel feelings that are often, you know, unpleasant or, or even joy people people are emotionally deprived, you know, of joy and grief. And so in the zoom rooms, we have what I call we are the experiential media because we have an experience in the zoom room. It's not like watching a regular television program where we're going to stop and cut and go to a commercial and interrupt somebody in the height of an emotion. We actually stay present for each other and we're able to really bear witness and have experiences ourselves. So it's, it's really a powerful uh, a powerful way of, of using the media instead of being used by it. Right. And um, I mean, it is really a cool thing in the, in the hub. I mean, that's just clever right there. Um, but, but you have, while the hub is, is a virtual place, you've also made it be a physical place by going to different places uh, around the country, uh, other places like Costa Rica, Tell about that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm connected with uh, a really dear friend of mine and an organization, Fumi John Stewart of May Peace yes. Prevail on Earth International. And in 2020, I was privileged to go to the Lincoln Memorial and do my very first flag ceremony where we hold the flag of every single flag in the world that we know of, of, of those that are defined by a country and and also indigenous flags and we presence that may peace prevail in each of those countries and by, and by the way was, is that the john stewart of the uh, show the tv the, no not not john stewart this is fumi fumi john stewart you may oh, want to okay. have her on sometimes she's amazing oh and, she's wonderful yeah and so she the organization is called may peace prevail on earth 
and um and it's been have... around a really long time because yes a long time ago i mean i've been a peace activist uh a long time and uh, way back 40 in the 80s i was working for a peace organization and that's when the peace polls were coming out and so the organization that I work with, that's how I met her, first met her, re-met, oh. well, I first met her there, and then I re-met her, and then I asked her when I saw her again, or talked with her again, do you remember that? She goes, of course I do. So oh. we were helpful in getting all these peace polls uh, stationed all around Ohio, because it was, um, we were trying to do unifying Ohio for peace. Mm. Anyway, but I think I well, there are over 200,000 of them now, and I've been involved yeah, yeah. in about a dozen of them <laughs> installed over the last couple of years. Last year, I think, was the, my most uh, my, my most installations. Um, we had one that we installed here in Lewisburg, North Carolina, uh, at my home, and we also went to Costa Rica and we blessed and installed uh, three. Uh, one at pa uh, Paz University, the P University of Peace in um, in, in uh, Costa Rica, and uh, really two cool because you can get different nationalities on each side. Right, different board. languages. There's many yeah. different languages, including Klingon. You can have Klingon. Klingon. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's really fabulous. So you pick your language. So uh, you can have up to eight languages. I have four on mine, um, but it, it's really amazing. There are um, other sided ones too, more than four sided ones that you yeah. can get. It's really I, I, I have a question for you. Uh, I, you know, you're the, uh, a reverend. Yes. The, yes. Uh, what? How does religion interface with what you're doing? Do you get into religion at all? Because I'm sort of a not anti-religion, but I sort of I sort of think most religions are separatists. Yeah, you know, instead of uniting people, they separate people because you have to be a member of, of you know their their religion. If you're not a member yes. of their religion, you're outside of it, which I think is very negative especially in today's society. It's true, Malcolm. And so I'm an interfaith and interspiritual minister. Mm -hmm. And what that means to me is I, well, I was ordained in an interfaith tradition and I studied multiple faith traditions, which I will study for the rest of my life as a commitment. And when I read and study different sacred texts, I find wisdom, love, compassion, unity, consciousness in all of them. There's and a, peace. That, and, and peace. And so um, that's been my fascination. I was um, I brought myself up in in the Christian tradition. Uh, my parents didn't go to church. They never made me go to church, but I willed myself to it because I absolutely loved the sense of community that I felt and that we all sang because I'm a musician and the people sang together. That was such an amazing experience when I was a wee one to to sing it with a group. And so I fell in love with the church experience. And as I got older, I recognized that Malcolm, I could see how divisive religions many religions were being presented and how isolating that was i left religion for a while and i didn't have language for it at the time but i was searching for more spirituality i have the language now and i can see spirit in the different traditions as well and so and as foundation. an interfaith, yes and as an interfaith minister, um, I'm ordained so I can marry people legally. I can divorce people legally. Uh, I can, you know, I can bless people. I, I, I aspire to affirm people and bless people in the in the wisdom of love and blessing them in their tradition. So I was honored to officiate a Lutheran funeral that a regular Lutheran priest would not do because the family wanted to have the um, the um, taps played at the very beginning of the service. And for some reason, the church didn't want to do that. Um, but I was able to honor this family in their time of grief to have that so that their son could then give a eulogy. Yeah, so yeah, it's but, interesting. But, but, yeah. but do you also include other uh, outside of Christianity, other yes. groups sort of like Judaism, Buddhism? Yes, Islam, Islam mostly. Yes, yep. so Islam, Jainism, with... uh, Hinduism, Buddhism. Uh, um, and and really one of my some of my most heart resonant um, teachings have been in indigenous wisdom is learning from our indigenous relatives across multiple different tribes and clans. I've been privileged in the Zoom rooms really to be exposed to many um, 
many people and their stories and have been very called into that um is my religion i would say would be the, my church would be the nature you know and um i could feel i feel that very much so with indigenous spirituality is the connection of nature right yeah right, right, right. everything everything is um, in you you <laughs> that's what i that's right it. that's right because it's, yeah, it's about social justice too you know, yes. which right. I, I I don't you know, I don't know if you're into to George Carlin, the comedian. I know George. Yeah, I remember but, but him. He, he he has a great. Uh, it's on uh, YouTube. A great thing on religion, about you know how uh, all these religious people. You know, they're talking about uh, actually Jesus, but all them believe that God. He's the one. It's a God. It's that one God that oversees everything. And he has a whole like 15 minutes about that, how, uh, you know, people believe a, a spirit that no one ever sees. Mm. But it's... Uh, like the wind. <laughs> now, uh, uh, so, sort of I've come to believe like uh, th th there's a sp there's something outside of us, but it's, it's yeah, more of a... that it's, which it's, inspires awe. I mean, a tree can inspire awe. Yeah. A sense I, I mean, of I, I love... I mean, ocean. Yeah. I, I feel at peace at the ocean. Mm. I know, that's why I brought it up because and, and like, the and the wonders of like the ocean and watch the waves and hear the waves and oh, that and and, 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 and we we are so yeah. you know. and then we how insignificant we are. Everybody thinks oh it's a major thing, right. major thing, but we are totally insignificant. Our time on Earth is so limited. Well, some of us are insignificant. No, you are <laughs> insignificant. <laughs> How about MLK? Are. Let's talk about MLK because that's one thing that we right. the world has been paying attention to is our MLK manifesting the dream. And so what we're doing for this next month of February is bringing in a lot of people, a lot of people that you know, Becky, Dr. Dr. Marty is going to be involved, Kurt Kruger, um Rita Marsh, Barb Shambliss, I um, mean all so many people. And the neat thing about this event, Manifesting the Dream, is because we don't have to stick to one thing per day at a certain time of the day for a certain part of the day. We can be kind of all, all over the place and and people can talk about more than one thing at a time because the spirit of Martin Luther King to me is the dream is that it all works together and it's it's all important and then it's for everyone mm -hmm. so what all are you guys guys doing there with peace through unity and one earth and or one world i always get that mixed up well it's wonderful <laughs> because we we get to dance with we the world and um and we had the opening convergence in january and that went really amazingly well. It and I'm gonna share amazing. my screen in a moment and I'll show you something. But for um, the 40 days goes through part of February. And then we have another event, which is the Building Beloved Community Convergence on February 24th and 25th. And so where we now all gather um, uh, virtually, you know, online outside of the Zoom rooms is in this place called oneworld.earth and it's free to join. And it's really incredible because when you when you come out to the website one world okay. Earth, and you click on the left side, you join for free. There's a way that I'm logged in, um, and everything yeah. here, if you see any times, is in Eastern New York time. But when you log in, it shows in your time zone. But when you click on the MLK Weekend of Service, and you click on Events, and then you click on Past Events you can now see all of the programs that we had that weekend and you can click on that and scroll down and then voila is a recording when you click on it so people you know it's been tricky for people to find recordings in the archives on facebook or where you know wherever but we've got a great way of now using that by clicking past events so we've got all of these events that were from that weekend and we will do the same thing. This is where the schedule will appear for um, the 24th and 25th of February. And as we the world hosts events, they can put events in here as well so that people can then, when you click on an event, um, let me show you one that 
if I click on here, if I go to the hub we were talking about, and we go to events, when you go into, hang on, let me go back here again. When you go into the, the event here, you can click on this, you can RSVP and you can click here and then actually go in the Zoom room when the event is live. So it gives you the ability to navigate the events that are happening when they're happening, schedule your you know calendar around things that you want to join by adding to your calendar. There's a button here to add to your calendar. And then post the event, you can go back if you missed it and you can watch them as well. So it's, it's a really great free resource. We have over 1600 people from all around the world who've created their free accounts and one of the beautiful things other than the ability to share this amazing content and be able to gather in zoom together is also that this site is not monetizing so it's not vying for your attention to make money the way facebook and you, you know all, all of the the social media outlets are vying for your attention in order to exploit it to make money what we're doing is we're making peace we're building the culture of peace as dr king said until those who love peace learn to organize as effectively as those who want war we won't you know we'll have peace on earth when we are learning to to um to work together effectively in peace building and there's 1600 like-hearted people right there who are who are shining together working together and bringing and we're growing we just grew 100 more people um yeah. since the last yeah, well, what, I, what i'd like to do is, is have a link to your to that website absolutely on, uh, um, we'll Mount, that Malcolm, in there. Mount malcolm and we and i don't know how to do it but i know between you and yana you'll be able to <laughs> Yes, I put the link to join and I'll put the link in the chat so that you can share that. And on the in the thing you go to one world dot earth, yep. though, and then people can join. So it's fantastic. With, it. with all of that, there's no reason to not be hopeful, correct? It's right. And hope to me looks like actively changing the story and and, you know, um, the story is not written yet right so we're there's a lot to be concerned about and there's a lot to 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 you know feel grief and sadness over and there's a lot to have joy about when we're emotionally exactly. honest and finding these people who believe in a different way of being than the way we have is really it's to me it's active hope because people aren't just talking about it we're actually doing something about it to this weekend i'm privileged to be able to offer a sermon at my uu church in raleigh and my sermon is on dr king's letter from birmingham jail and the relevancy of that 27 page document today and to me the essence of it is it, it includes all of us, you know, honoring all of the diversity of us. It's, it's unity consciousness in that document. And we, we've we made strides and as we've got many, many more strides to take, and yet we are taking the strides. And so I'm, I'm very, um, very grateful to witness and to support people who believe in a new way and are living in that new way now. And so I, you know, I feel sad as well and I feel just a lot of joy because I it's see just, It's an addendum. There's a uh, a movie that I saw yesterday called Rustin, which is the, uh, about the March on Washington, which oh. is excellent. It's on, uh, uh, I think it's a Netflix or, or YouTube. Okay. And, the, the, uh, and I forget the name of the actor that played uh, Bayard Rustin, uh, uh, was nominated for the Academy Award. Wow, fabulous! And, and basically, like he, which I didn't realize, he was the one that started the march on Washington, and got Martin Luther. He was a friend of Martin Luther King, and got him involved. Wow, interesting. So it's it's a powerful movie. Yeah, I'd I, like uh, to see that. What I think is amazing is that the the words of Martin Luther King at the time and now are timely and timeless at the same time, which is really amazing. So. Yes. Well, yeah, well, again, I go, I look at things at the continuum, even the, again, I was raised Jewish, but the words, if you just followed the words of Jesus, not anything in the religion, but what he said is timeless. Mm -hmm. uh, the same as Gandhi. It's timeless. It, it's truisms of, of 
the world and how you, you, uh, you know, you're supposed to live. But I'm really very pessimistic of all my years. It hasn't come true. I mean, I grew up in the days of, you know, uh, of Martin Luther King when he was, you know, the March on Washington, I was 20 years old. Mm. And, you know, into all that thoughts, I was raised on folk music. You know, we shall overcome. But none of it has happened. And it's not... You can't say none. It, 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 get, it gets depressing. There are certain people, you know, a certain portion of the world that's into it. But right now I'm involved with, uh, you know, the politics of the U.S. And I'm amazed that people are still saying, I want Trump as president. After all we've been through. And it's it sort of, you know, where does it end? I don't know. And the whole thing of, uh, I forget who it was, it said, the, 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 our most pressing issue that we have now in the world is climate change. And we're going to, uh, in, in California here now, we have these uh, rainstorms up north that everybody, uh, they say once in a 10,000 year type of uh, event. And according to the, the the weather people, no, it's not. It's going to be more common now because of the climate change. And all over the world, there's climate change. Yet we're not doing anything about it or very little. And well, there's that's a clock an that's overstatement, Malcolm. The change, be the change you want to see happen. Excuse me? What? <laughs> No, it's not that people are doing it, but it's not reaching the people. People are still involved. Well, we got to keep working on it. I know, but That's how why long? we're doing this. Yeah, but it, but it's it, it's not an eternal type of thing. There's a certain limit, according to the scientists. Yeah. There's a certain there's a certain time limit. It's not that we have for the eternity to to, I to have change hope. it. I have hope. Um. Right. But do you, you have I think the actual? It, I think, Malcolm, I, I, I hear your heart, I hear your pain, and I I can't imagine having been alive when Dr. King gave such compelling, inspiring talks, and that we're still trying to address the same problems of 55 years ago. You know, I'm 53. I can't imagine how I would feel, because I'm only 53. And yet I feel the, the complexity of the paradox all the time. And I'm constantly trying to go into the unity space where, where I can meet somebody who I don't agree with and have a conversation with them, with them without either of our blood pressure going up, that we can meet each other in our humanity. And I'll give an example because it is, um, I think the, we're aspiring to have a democracy in America still. It's why I chose to move to this country. And as a little girl, my parents moved us here because of John Denver, because of John Denver's lyrics. My dad yeah. said, I want to live in a country where, where lyrics are written in such, you know, the eagle and the hawk, you know, the calypso. And, and my dad fell in love and we moved here when I was a little girl. And as an adult, I had a choice. Do I want to stay in America? Or do I want to go back to England? I went back to England and I had a really wonderful experience, but I realized I really want to live in America. I want to live in a, in a place where I didn't have words for it in my twenties, but now I see we aspire to democracy here. And for a long time, it was the only country that really had more than half a chance. And at this point where, you know, there's a lot of changes that are coming. There's a lot of things that are collapsing. And I see it as a healing crisis. Even though we have this collapse, we're in this, this up and down at the same time. So, so many things are rising. So many people are finding each other. So um, I wanted to share this story though, that recently I went to a home funeral that I was part of. And um, I met somebody who was very different. We were very different from each other. Uh, we had similarities in that we both had endured a long illness that had changed a lot in our lives. And I was bringing up some of the changes that our young people are teaching us about shedding understandings of gender, for example. You know, um, we're really gr growing our, we need to grow our hearts to support our young people as they experience themselves to be. Whether we can't understand what they're going through or not, we have to have compassion. And I said something about this and initially she didn't agree with me. And she started to show, to say, well, I'm fed up with people 
people who think and, and then and then she softened for a moment and she listened to what I said about honoring our youth and their gender identity changes that they are great teachers for us because as we're in this healing crisis and so many things are changing our young people are carrying a lot a lot more than I was when I was younger I feel you know they've been been um burdened and also opportuned with this moment where they're rising and learning and then she said something to me that made me recognize the essence of of her humanity and we're very different and i thought oh you know i started to have my own stereotypes and my own assumptions of of her oh she her political affiliation must be this and i started hearing all these voices in my head and she just said to me you know, why should I care about their gender identity? No one cares about my illness. And I could see the essence of her humanity was not being affirmed because she is suffering in her physical being and nobody stops to help her, you know, and that was the sense. And I think I think you said that, you know, the biggest crisis in the world is, is climate change. I think the biggest crisis in the world is that we have forgotten that we're connected to each other. Mm -hmm. And that, that in that moment, I had an opportunity to talk with her about her suffering and to bless her and, and not as a minister, she didn't even know I was, you know, that just as a human being, as a new friend to say, you know, Recognize really your sorry. pain. Absolutely. Yeah, but, 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 uh, uh, as I say, as I get older, I realize that the more things change, the more things stay the same. I mean, we have that. I was just reading in the in the paper today that the uh, anti-Semitism mm. has has Sweet. grown in Europe, and 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 and, uh, and and there are people who are denying the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is you know uh, really raised its ugly hit since uh, you know the Gaza war. Yes. But it's the same. It's the same when, when uh, except Jesus was walking the earth and talking about the money changers. People didn't, but basically he was, uh, he was like a revolutionary <laughs> in essence. But there's only a certain portion of people that, as I say, even the religious, the religious people do not follow his tenets. I would uh, like religion if, or, or follow religion if they listen to what Jesus said. And not all of a sudden form their own, you know, little sex like we were talking about. Well, so, people know, are looking for meaning, aren't they? People are looking for meaning. And for me in my own quest, I can only answer for myself. You know, I can't answer for people right. who aren't who aren't making choices that I make. I can only continue to try to hold myself to to the teachings of Jesus. But, but, but anyway, yeah, anyway, Becky, yeah, I'd, I'd like to continue this for another half hour but our yeah. time just ran out <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's really beautiful though it's great great i'm really grateful to have been able to share a little yeah, bit about and, 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 and there's so many things doing. that we could we talk about because you sound like a wonderful person and i oh. wish you would live closer to here <laughs> to los angeles because i'd love to you know sit to get together with you for a cup of coffee or tea or just talk well, and if i come out there them. my beloved his name's robert he lived um his family's in northern california we were actually out in la last year yeah. for the la conversion and, so and you sometime. didn't say hello i know i didn't know oh now i God. know now i know that you're there malcolm come and see okay me. i thank you very much <laughs> thank Yana, you Yana. i will see you next week and you're listening to malcolmpresents.com uh, well, actually, you're listening to uh, uh, Malcolm and We. Malcolm and We. Malcolm and we. I mean, right. I just say, may peace prevail on earth. I just right. have to say that. May and thanks very prevail. much. Absolutely. And again, we, we will have your links on Malcolm and We. <laughs> bye bye. Have a great week, guys. The objective of the organization We the World is to facilitate cooperation on a global scale amongst groups and individuals dedicated to implementing solutions to the many challenges we face on the planet at this time.